there is no winner or loser. I just uh, someone who have to suffer more than the other. Windy, you left Vietnam. What is the terrible thing? Uh, I remember in context they look like the same. Like these are the Vietnamese people, just different ideology. Die one by one. The Vietnam War was a civil war fought between the North Vietnamese and the South Vietnamese. It started in 1955, and by 1975, the city of Saigon fell to the north. 1.6 million people fled the country in fear of their lives. Of this 1.6 million, 700,000 people became unified, and these brave souls are the Vietnamese boat people. My childhood, and uh, before the war is, I remember that, you know, it's great, that I don't know nothing about the war. My father died when I was very young, about five, six years old. So I really struggled to survive at a very young age uh, in the fishing village. My dad was, you know, he was in the army, so, you know, he fought. You know, but luckily, you know, he, he was a medic. But, you know, I mean, he was a POW. Still in grade school, maybe about 10 years old. And that's when, when I saw soldier, because my, my father is in the army. So he's prepared for it. And we saw the gun around the house and a lot of soldiers around my house. All I remember that you know, all my friends, uh, the brother, some of them have to go at age of 17, 18. So they, they, for what, maybe a few months, okay, they die because they're not prepared for it. They just, they just send you as a man, a young man of 18 years old, they just send you to just know how to you know, to shoot with a gun. And we, of course, we are scared. And at night, even though that we go to the small area, when we heard about the book, my father always carry a gun and say, move, move, go, go. So six of us and my mom, okay, and uh, actually my grandma also that live there, so they always, all in a small room until about maybe a couple hours and everything settled out and then we come out. When I grow up and when until I met him, you know, my husband and then we leave, we left Vietnam. We, when the communists took over, when the, our country collapsed, when Saigon, you know, collapsed, we, we lost everything. I mean, the Viet Cong, they came in and they pretty much took everything. They took our the land, they took our money, they took property. I mean, they took everything. We have reason to leave the country because of the, the f fear of imprisonment, imprisonment, or even death under communist regime. Pretty much like in the middle of the night, and they, they we had to sneak out of the capital. So my mom told me that, you know, we snuck out of the Capitol, you know, underneath, you know, hay, you know, on a hay cart. So we pay people to take us out and take us to, you know, to the, the shores, you know, near my family's farm because, you know, uh, my, my mom's family's farm because one of my sister, uh, her sister's husband was a fisherman. Okay, so luckily he had a fishing boat. So he said he opened the hatch of the vessel you know where they put all the fish inside, when they catch the fish? So he, he tell her, open the door, and he tells us to go in there. So the next thing we know that it's very dark, so we, the next few hours, we have more people coming in. So more people in the vessel. So that night, we are, we are heading out to the sea. On the sea, we saw a lot of like a small boat, like fishing boat with the people, the whole family. 
and tried to climb up to the to to our ship, and they drop, drop, drop. The people keep dropping. Okay, on in the sea. We were robbed by Thai pirates for another year or so, and you know we sprung a leak. I mean, this was like, you know, it's a dangerous time, right? We're in the middle of the ocean. I mean, just imagine being in the middle of the ocean, not on a big metal ship like we have now. We were on a rickety wooden fishing boat. So, that, you know, two of my uncles actually jumped overboard. And they swam underneath the boat and somehow, you know, did a quick pad job and, and, you know, got us going again. But soon afterwards, my, one of my cousins, you know, she's pregnant at the time, but because of all this, you know, you know, traumatic events, you know, being robbed, being in the sea, no food, no water, she went into labor. So the boat got stuck in there with 256 people, die one by one, because no boat to get in there to help. They don't see any boat around, and they stay there for like about six months. They die all, all of them die, except 26 people. And those 26 people and eating all human meat to survive. So finally, when we we saw an oil platform, you know how people do oil in the ocean, so they have a platform there. So luckily, we saw these people and and they show us the way to a nearest island. We landed at one of the refugee camps uh, in Malaysia, Bidom. So, I mean, when we landed, I mean, the first thing that I was told that happened was, you know, all the relatives destroyed the boat because what, you know, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> they didn't want us there. The time there is uh, very nice because we passed all the, the dangers. So we came there, Taiwanese people very um, friendly. So they accept us in the refugee camp. Everybody have place to, to stay, to sleep, and they serve food for us, and they give uh, money every month. So I live four months. Uh, for me, that time is so nice. U.S. people come there, come to every refugee camp to interview you and to bring you here. Afterwards, so getting off the island as a refugee, you know, I mean, it's, it's a combination of, you know, knowing people, having sponsors, and lottery. Because not everybody got off that island. You know, if you had some kind of connection to the government, you know, you got off quicker. Uh, if you had sponsors in the U.S., which fortunately we did, you know, we got out, you know, we got out quicker. And the last word is lottery. I mean, we had a hut. That <laughs> was the best way to describe it. It was a hut. Yeah, so we had a little pretty much straw hut. And every week, my dad would go and, you know, receive supplies, which is basically a burlap bag full of canned foods. And we had to make it last. More culture shock than anything else, you know, because, you know, we're used to, you know, it's Vietnam, I mean, it's, it's a whole different world, right? D difficult because English was, wasn't our first language. And unlike learning from childhood, when we got here, we, we were put into all the English as a second language class and to um, navigate through the whole, um, just the early school years, you know, as, as, a, as someone who is a foreigner, right? Or when we still had accents that, you know, made, made it very obvious that we weren't from here <laughs> and people would make fun of that. While we focus on the refugees who resettled in the U.S., many also resettled in Canada, Italy, Australia, France, West Germany, and the United Kingdom. Several thousands were also sent back to Vietnam. The Vietnamese boat people broke barriers in history because they broke the international borders when resettling, and they broke the social borders by assimilating to the places where they settled, and they were able to overcome the language and the cultural barriers and establish a new legacy and a new land.